a bunch of facial expressions uh, expressions <laughs> being made by you, brother. What you, what you over there thinking, D1? Yo, <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me bring some common sense to the conversation. Um, Yo, this is the easiest election ever. Like, Donald Trump can't even be taken seriously. Like, by anybody who's using common sense, he can't even be taken seriously when we're talking about character, when we're talking about intelligence, when we're talking about these type of issues and many more issues. The, he has set the bar so low during his time of wanting to be a politician, right? That now people accept things from him, sound bites. Uh, it doesn't even make sense. They're super divisive. He's a fear mongerer. He makes you feel like if he doesn't get elected, the United States is about to turn into a third world country. You hear me? He literally uses this type of rhetoric to make people feel fearful that if he's not in charge, oh my gosh, this country is about to just go down the drain and they're gonna be eating animals in front of your face. Metro, is it true that Haitians eat cats in Haiti? I'm gonna ask him in Creole now. Est-ce que c'est vrai que Haïti a mangé chien, a ch uh, chat Haïti? Non, c'est tout ça. Là. Ce sont vérités normales, nous mangeons chat. Les chiens, hein? là, 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 bon, par contre, il y a des coups de manger chien, mais chat là, ce sont mangés naturels les vous. Ok, let me translate to you, for you. <laughs> when it comes to eating cats, that's a very normal thing, he said. Wow. He said, when it comes to dogs, not really. There's not too many Haitians who have ever done anything like that. He's never seen it. But when it comes to cats, that's a very common practice in Haiti. Wow. This is his work. You got all these rapists and all these people, that these thugs that's getting in uh, into the country and they're going to come for you and come for your job. Hey, Trump or Kamala? Say Trump, be honest. Damn, so why Trump, though? Why Trump? Because we used to get paid and shit like he used to keep immigrants out. So, you know, we was able for us to get jobs. It's hard for us to get jobs now, shit, because immigrants taking over. So you're not the Venezuelans? I ain't fucking with them. I ain't gonna lie, they taking our jobs and some more shit. I get, they do do it better than us, though, but they taking our man. I heard they're taking over the buildings. Is that true? Hell yeah, boy. I'm going to stop you because I know exactly what happened. Martha. I'm going to stop you. The incidents were limited to a handful of apartment conflicts, uh, apartment complexes, and the mayor said our dedicated police officers have acted on those concerns. A handful of problems. Only, Martha, do you hear yourself? Only a handful of apartment complexes in America were taken over by Venezuelan gangs. And it's just, it's so divisive, y'all. Like, it's to the point where this ain't even a real conversation. Like, it's, it's really not. And there's people whose intelligence I really respect. But unfortunately, like, we've gotten to the point where he's still calling Democrats demons, calling people demonic. And it has a whole bunch of people saying, well, since he's setting the tone and he's making it okay to refer to people like this. Now, I'm a, I'm a man of God. I'm a Christian, right? I'm also an independent when it comes to political affiliation at this stage of my life. It's to the point to where I see so many Christians who unfortunately following their leader, they're not even Republicans. They're Trumplicans. You heard me? Like they literally are part of like a cult to the point where if he sets the tone and says that if you're a Democrat, then that's a demonic party. Then you got all these Christians who are online right now telling other Christians, we all praising the same Jesus. They're saying, you're not really Christian if you vote for Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. You're not really Christian if you would ever vote for a Democrat. And now you got Christians who are at war with one another, literally, over the type of rhetoric that this man and other pastors who claim to be prophets and they in front of their pulpit on a Sunday morning constantly saying, yo, if you don't vote for Trump, it's these Christian nationalists who saying, if you don't vote for Trump, if you don't vote Republican, then you can't really be a Christian. And it's just, this is all, like we're making it seem like his character is really something for us to take serious as having elected as the leader of our country. God is still in control and we're going to be fine regardless. But in terms of taking him seriously as a political candidate, nah, y'all, like, let's use our common sense, man. This ain't that hard. No, 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 no. I, have a, I have an issue with this because you being a child of God, you have a platform and you have an audience that you are influencing. And basically what this young man said was that national security is not that important. That fear mongering is now what, what, what I would see as alerting the American people to what is happening in their country. That's fear mongering to this young man. They're eating the cats and the dogs, they're eating the pets. You know, all that fear mongering, you know, telling them that they're going to take their jobs. It's like, young man, <laughs> number one, that's culture. They've, they've admitted to, as far as the cats, they've admitted that. Like, it, it's not a big thing from where we come from. As far as the jobs, that is an issue because not only are we sending our jobs overseas, but now we are competing as Americans with people that should not be here in the first place. I just want to read you this real quick. It's Proverbs 8 verse 14 through 16. It says, counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. 
by me kings reign and rule issues and rulers issue decrees that are just by me princes govern and nobles all who rule on earth it is important it is absolutely important that we go to god as far as who's going to be leading us that they would have the mind of god in in crafting policies and rules and governing and it's not to say that oh if you, you know if you're a christian then and, and you vote democrat then you're not a real christian no i wouldn't say that i would just say that you're carnal and you lack discernment that's it because if you're looking at a party that has literally removed god from their platform i was proud to serve this party as the platform drafting committee chair as the chair i come before you today to discuss two important matters related to our party's national platform as an ordained United Methodist minister, I am here to attest and affirm that our faith and belief in God is central to the American story and informs the values we've expressed in our party's platform. In addition, President Obama recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and our party's platform should as well. Mr. Chairman, I have submitted my amendment in writing and I believe it is being projected on the screen for the delegates to see. I move adoption of the amendment as submitted and shown to the delegates. A motion has been made. Is there a second? Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, the matter requires a two-thirds vote in the affirmative. All those delegates in favor say aye. aye. All those delegates opposed say no. In the opinion of the... Let me do that again. All of those delegates in favor say aye. aye. All those delegates opposed say no. I, um, I guess. You've got to rule, and then you've got to let them do what they're going to do. Rule. I'll do that one more time. All those delegates in favor say aye. aye. All those delegates opposed say no. no. In the opinion of the chair, two thirds have voted in the affirmative. The motion is adopted, and the platform has been amended as shown on the screen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, they have to fight to get it back on. And you, you are the crowd. <laughs> you are the crowd. No, we don't want that guy in here. Take him off. Okay. Not only that, but everything that they support opposes the kingdom of God. And actually the things that they are thriving on literally are the gods of the Old Testament. Gods as in lowercase g's. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? You don't see Moloch? I mean, we call it something different, but it's still the sacrificing of children. Like you don't see, I think it's Ashtoreth. You don't see that, the, 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 the goddess of sexuality and all of these things have to do with prosperity. You know, the, the whole thing of making sure that we have a prosperous and sure, secure future as a woman. You, you don't see that? We call it something different, but it's the same spirit. And the fact that he would, he would say Trumpians, you're not even Christians. So for me to say that, that you were carnal and lack discernment, that's, that's where I would take it. But to turn around and say, y'all ain't even Christians, y'all are Trumpians. Okay. Um, I came across this uh, video that I found to be extremely interesting because if you would have asked me a little bit ago, like what order would you place these things? I would say it's God, family, country. And when I heard this man say this for the first time, Actually, I'll just let him break it down. So what we've got, and, and every person of faith I know today, if I ask them to prioritize God, family, and country, they will say God first, family second, country third. Benjamin Rush said God first, country second, family. Now, why did he get it wrong? Interesting. He didn't get it wrong. He says if you ever lose control of your country, it will become the great enemy of your family. And so if you really want to protect your family, it's like patriotism, you got to get involved with your country, make sure you got good leaders, good policies, make sure they follow the Constitution, because then your family is going to be prosperous and success. But right now, it's the government that's one of the chief enemies of the it family, is. It and it's is. because we don't know our documents, and we haven't learned what public schools used to teach, love and serve God, love and serve your country, love and serve your family. And that was the objectives we had. And that's where Benjamin Rush has got such wisdom. He's, he's so that is why country is important. And this is what you see all throughout. Any time that, and again, if you look at what God is saying all throughout, he's talking to his people. His people keep walking off their post. His people 
continue in rebellion. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Is he talking to the world? No. If my people, it is the rebellion in the children of God. Even when he said Christian nationalists, I was like, oh my God, he sound just like the world. Christian nationalists to love God and love country, to use it like it's a filthy word and then support somebody that, oh my God, the things that she has supported. I mean, opened up her campaign with drag queens, had an abortion bus going around with them at their, their conventions. I, the list goes on and on. And I said it in my previous video. It's not a matter of God is still on the throne. What does that have to do with your faithfulness? If you claim to be a child of God, then you have to stand with the kingdom of righteousness. I don't see what the problem is. And to go on and say, oh, well, you, you think Trump is a Christian? He's, he's a convicted felon and he, he's a rapist. You know who was also a convicted rapist? You wanna know who else was also a convicted rapist? Joseph. Joseph was accused of rape. Not only was he accused of rape, but he went to jail. Yeah, he did. But did he do it? No. Let's look at the female that claimed that Trump raped her. I'm not the victim. You don't feel like a victim? I was not thrown on the ground and ravished. Which, the word rape carries so many sexual connotations. This was not, this was not sexual. For, it just, it, it hurt. It just, what, it just, you know. But I think most people think of rape as a, I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not. I think sexual. most people think of rape as being sexy. Mm -hmm. Let's take a short break. Think of the fantasies. Mm -hmm. We're just going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, we'll talk more on the other side. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> That's right. Some people view rape as, as a fantasy. It's sexy. This lady. <laughs> if this lady told me that my brother, my father, anybody did that, I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to need y'all to hook her up to like a lie detector test or something. I'm going to need some samples. I just, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You know, and the fact that like she had to take him back. She didn't win the case, but had to take him back for defamation. Ma'am, you accused me of something. I'm going to leave it there. Um, yeah, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. He put it this way. He said, now more than ever before, the people are responsible for the character of their Congress. He said, if that body be ignorant, reckless, and corrupt, it's because the people tolerate ignorance, recklessness, and corruption. He said it would be intelligent, brave, and purist because the people, I like this word, demand these high qualities to represent them in the national legislature. If the next centennial does not find us a great nation, it'll be because the people who represent the enterprise, the culture, and the morality of the nation. That's us. That's the people in this room now, the people at home watching, the people watching on the DVD. We are the enterprise, the culture, and the morality of the nation. He said if we don't have a great nation, it's because those people did not aid in controlling the political forces.